as a student of law you must be aware that in every act there are few not so important sections and few important sections and then there are few utmost important sections if you ask me one of the important section in cpc i will definitely name section 9 because this is one of the most important section as far as cpc is concerned section 9 discusses about courts to try all civil cases unless barred which is one of the important part of part 1 which discusses about suits in general starting from section 9 to section 35b we are going to discuss section 9 in detail and then I am helping you guys to understand what are civil cases and what are not civil cases. Then we are discussing five important case laws. And finally, I am going to discuss the guidelines that is being given by Supreme Court. I hope that gives sufficient content for you as a student or as an advocate. With that, let's get into the first slide. Section 9 starts with a beautiful statement saying that civil courts have jurisdiction to try all suits of civil nature. So it opens a very big door for the civil courts by saying that it can take all the suits which are of civil nature. But then it comes with two important exceptions saying that suits of which cognizance is barred expressly or impliedly. So unless and until there is a bar expressly or impliedly mentioned, all the other cases of civil nature can be taken by civil courts. Now remember the political cases or religious rights related cases or cases of criminal nature cannot be taken by civil case though few of them can be of civil nature because they are also barred. Now what are these expressly barred cases? Like for example, CRPC which is all about criminal cases or different tribunals like the revenue tribunals or income tax tribunals, industrial tribunals or domestic tribunals like bar council, medical counseling, university, club etc. are expressly saying that they are not coming under the code that is CPC or there are few laws which are impliedly saying that they are not coming under the umbrella of CPC by having remedies in itself like for example sometime government sends a notification that if there is any loss to anyone government shall bear the same there the remedy is already available so it will not come under the umbrella of cpc unless and until there is expressly or impliedly barred all the other civil cases of civil nature will definitely come under the civil courts. That is what you need to remember when it comes to section 9 of CPC. Then comes the beautiful explanation. It says wherever there is a suit asking for the right to property or to an office, it is of civil nature case. So that comes under the jurisdiction of civil courts. Now, if someone challenges that by saying that there are questions of religious rights or ceremonies or some fees is involved in that particular case, so it is not coming under the jurisdiction of civil courts. The explanation says nothing of that will matter and the case will definitely taken by the civil courts because it is coming under the jurisdiction of civil courts as it has the matter of property or of an office. Before getting into what are the different types of civil cases or what are not considered as civil cases, I am taking you through one of the important judgment by Supreme Court in the case law of PMA Metropolitan versus MM Marotma. Here the Supreme Court stated that the expensive nature of the section is demonstrated by use of phaseology both positive and negative. The earlier part opens the door widely and later debars entry to only those which are expressly or impliedly barred because it says initially that all the cases of civil nature are coming under the jurisdiction of civil courts but then it brings these two terms saying that whichever is barred by expressly or impliedly will not come under the jurisdiction of civil courts. Then the Honorable Supreme Court discusses about the two explanations by saying that one existing from inception and later added in 1976 bring out clearly the legislative intention of extending operation of the section to religious matters where right to property or office is involved irrespective of whether any fee is attached to the office or not. The language used is 
simple but explicit and clear in the last part supreme court gives lot of importance to barring expressly or impliedly by saying it is structured on the basis of a civilized jurisprudence that absence of machinery for enforcement of right renders it negatory the heading which is normally a key to the section brings out unequivocally that all civil suits are cognizable unless barred what is meant by it is explained further by widening the ambit of the section by use of the word shall and the expression all suits of a civil nature unless expressly or impliedly barred nowhere in the act there is a list of suits of civil nature or the suits which are not of civil nature now we have to make one right to understand what are the suits of civil nature so for that i have brought a list this is not a consolidated or comprehensive list there will be many more suits which are of civil nature but i have brought 14 such aspects here like suits related to rights of damages or related to rights of property or related to civil wrongs or related to damages or related to correction of date of birth or related to specific relief or related to rights of worship or related to recovery or related to taking out of religious procession or related to dissolution of marriage or for restitution of conjugal rights or related to rent or related to specific performance in a contract or against wrongful dismissal from services and salaries and suits of declaration of title and possession can be few example for suits of civil nature while they are coming under the jurisdiction of civil courts there are many suits which are not coming under civil courts like suits related to right of privacy or suits where principal question is a caste or suits of pure religious rites and ceremonies related or suits for upholding mere dignity and honor or suits related to recovery of voluntary payments of offerings or suits against expulsion from caste or criminal in nature or political or religious suits are not coming under the jurisdiction of civil courts then comes the few important case laws in the case law of hridayanath versus ramchandra high court of kolkata held that jurisdiction means the authority which a court has to decide for the matter presented in a formal way for its decision next comes the landmark case law that is chandrakant tukaram versus municipal corporation of ahmedabad which is held by supreme court now here there was very clear bar that the industrial dispute shall managed by the industrial tribunal there is a clear expressed bar available even then for the sake of justice the civil court though it is taking lengthy time and sometime it may not be very efficient in solving the industrial dispute it shall take such cases because the ultimate objective is to ensure that justice is prevailed that way the expressly available bar can also be negated if there is justice is not prevailed by the industrial tribunal the similar opinion is also seen in the case law of secretary of state versus mask and company where the privy council held that it is agreed that the civil courts cannot take such suits where there is expressly or impliedly bar available even then for the sake of justice civil court can take such cases because the final objective is to reach that justice is prevailed and lastly in the case law of shri panchanagar parak versus purushottam das supreme court held that without any express statutory provisions the court needs to inspect the reason rules and related provisions of the act so as to decide the bar of the jurisdiction of civil courts that way it is giving importance to civil courts that unless and until a very clear bar is available with the reason or rules or related provisions nobody can stop civil court taking such cases now the final part of the discussion which is on general principles by supreme court when it comes to suits coming under the jurisdiction of civil court it says every court has inherent power to decide on its own jurisdiction then the presumption is considering the jurisdiction of civil court should be in its favor so the presumption is should be in the favor of civil court and then unless there is a clear expressed or implied bar in cognizance 
the jurisdiction should be in favor of civil court and the burden of proof of exclusion of jurisdiction of a court it is on the party who asserts it if somebody says that it is not coming under the jurisdiction of civil court then they have to prove it that is the burden on them fifth principle discusses on consent by saying mere consent can neither confer nor take away the jurisdiction of a court so consent really doesn't matter here and the sixth principle is jurisdiction depends on the allegation made by the plaint but not of defense opinion here the allegations made by the plaint is very important to decide whether it is coming under the jurisdiction of civil court or not and defense opinion it may say different hundred stories saying that it is not coming under the jurisdiction of civil court that is not very important it is the allegation made by the plaint which decides whether such case will come under the jurisdiction of civil court or not and the seventh principle is a decree without jurisdiction is void hence the jurisdiction can be questioned at any stage of proceeding including execution it is very very important to have a jurisdiction to handle a suit if some court without having jurisdiction handled or trialed the suit and gave a decree that is void because such court is not having jurisdiction of that particular suit itself so such suits can be challenged at any stage with the jurisdiction question and that will become void that is what discussed in seventh principle the eighth principle discusses about the substances of a case and form of the case by saying substance of the matter is very important to decide the jurisdiction but not the form that is what is the eighth principle given by supreme court and the last one civil court can review the matters where the jurisdiction is barred to decide whether the provisions of an act have been complied with or whether an order was passed outside the scope of the provisions of law for this we have already seen case law also it doesn't bar completely for the sake of justice civil courts even after having bar they can still take such cases to ensure justice that brings an end to this particular discussion i will see you with a new topic in my next class thank you so much for subscribing my channel please like share and comment my videos all the very best for whatsoever purpose you are watching me and thanks again